What is going on, investors? Back again. Time to take a look at Alibaba, ticker symbol B-A-B-A. A, the stock just reported earnings today. So you see the stock bouncing around a little bit, currently down about 2%. This is a $700 billion company. Wow, that's even bigger than I thought it was. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the numbers. I'll be honest, they don't lay these out perfectly. So I, I hope that you can bear with me as I walk you through all the numbers that I think are pertinent to this business. We'll jump into the chart. I think there's some interesting stuff here. We'll jump into some alternatives with Alibaba. Because as you guys know, you know, there's a lot of tension between the United States government and the government of China. And there's some interesting stuff happening where our government, the United States government, is forcing some Chinese companies basically to sell their United States operations. And guess what? It goes to a friend or a supporter of the president. And I'm not criticizing the president. This happens on both sides of the aisle. Maybe not this exact situation. Can't say that I've seen that. But Political kickbacks and things like that happen in Washington, D.C. I would just want you guys to know I'm not criticizing or praising this type of deal. The reality is this is what we have to deal with, especially with Chinese owned companies. And if that continues, if this sort of thing continues, well, guess what? You might want to expose yourself a little bit different to Alibaba. And we'll talk about that here in a second. So stock's been on a monster move like most stocks, but down a little bit today. So maybe there's a buying opportunity. Let's jump into the numbers. So what Alibaba does, and maybe I just didn't find it very well, is they kind of report their revenue here. And it, what they don't do is really uh, put out the expenses right underneath it. I've got some more revenue here. They don't really give you expenses. So we kind of have to kind of look at them in two different lenses. As a broad overview here, we've got revenue here. That was up 34%. So this is in the local currency, the RMB here. And then you've got United States dollar. I just want to say, if I reference the RMB as dollars. It's just out of habit and it will be a mistake. So we're up 34%. That's absolutely sensational year over year considering what's been going on in China for a really long time actually and here in the United States since Alibaba has exposure here in the United States as well. Income from operations went up 42%. I want to show you what's even more impressive. Okay. Net income up 143%. What's interesting is non-GAAP income is actually up 28%. So there's some accounting uh, irregularities in here, but look at that. We're growing our top line. We're growing our bottom line. This is absolutely phenomenal. Let's jump in to see what's working for Alibaba. So they've got this core commerce business. So they've got customer management, they've got commission, and then they've got others here. I like how they add the S there. Maybe they just uh, convert these right from the Chinese language. So we've got, uh, you know, percentage of revenue here. But then we, uh, what I would focus on is here is uh, the year over year change. So a uh, customer management, we're up 23%. Take a look at this growth. We go from three months here, 19 to 20. Commissions are up 17%. The other is up 80%. And you can come down here and kind of take a look at what other is. It's this Tmall supermarket, this fresh hippo and the direct import and and in time. So I'm not going to pretend that I know all this, but some of this looks maybe grocery related, which would make sense on this, uh, you know, this big, big uptick on the year over year change. So the Chinese commerce wholesale here, again, we're seeing strong demand for all their products across the board. And then finally we get down to cloud computing that is growing at almost as fast as this other category, but it's much larger, at least from a profit perspective as well. And so we're growing at 59% here. Digital media, 9%. I actually would have expected that might be grow a little bit more. Maybe they've got competition in China, or maybe it's just not a way that the, the consumers there uh, consume media because we've seen Netflix really take off and some other of those streaming services. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, maybe that growth was already baked in. So, and then finally, we've got a little bit declined here, but it's so, so such a small business. So when we've T total out our revenues here, we come down here to 153 R 153 billion RMB. And so for United States dollars, that's at $21 billion. That's a massive, massive amount of money. Now, expenses. I think this is probably the most impressive thing I'll see all day. So I just showed you on the revenue side, we were growing. I mean, everything's just grow. Everything's just off the charts with growth year over year. Take a look at the year-over-year -year changes on these expenses. Look at this. 
I mean, we're not even changing. I mean, it's exactly the same. I I almost never, ever, ever see this. I don't know if it has to do with, uh, you know, Chinese labor or or the government being involved in, in some aspect. But I mean, their expenses didn't change at all. In fact, some of them went down. I mean, it's just absolutely incredible how well they're controlling their expenses while they're growing their revenues. I mean, the top, top line revenue grew 34% and their expenses didn't grow at all. I mean, I'm this is just phenomenal. I mean, if they can keep this up, it's just absolutely just incredible that they're able to grow their revenues like this and expenses literally didn't go anywhere. Okay, so from a balance sheet perspective, we'll jump into that. Everything looks really healthy for me. So we've got the previous period here, and then it's like we go to March 31st year. Not exactly sure how that works, but we, you know, we're up on cash and cash equivalents. In terms of United States dollars, it looks like we've got about $53 billion in cash. Here it is in the local currency as well. So total assets wise, we've got $193 billion. That's a lot. Okay. And, but when we come down here to the liability side, let's just take a look at what we've got. So we've got non-current bank borrowing. So that's a little bit of debt, just a tiny amount of debt. We've got some senior notes here. Everything else looks, you know, pretty standard in terms of running a business. We've got current bank borrowings here at a very, very small amount of money. In general, we've, we've got total liabilities here of $62 billion. And again, this is a company with over $53 billion in cash and a, a close to $70 billion worth of total assets, current assets, total current assets. This is a company from a balance sheet perspective, looks as crystal clean as it possibly can get. From an operational perspective, is uh, I, I don't know if I've ever seen this, at least in, in recent memory, I don't recall seeing a company grow their top line by 34% and their their expenses basically didn't move. They basically didn't go anywhere. I mean, it's almost unheard of. It's absolutely phenomenal. Alibaba is, I think, firing all cylinders is an understatement for this company. Now, from a stock chart perspective... We've been in an uptrend. Okay, this stock, you know, like a lot of stocks, made a low down here at 170 back in March, and it's been on a pretty, you know, fast ride upwards here. Now, what I see is here is now we're 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 kind of stuck in this channel here, and um, you know, whether the, typically what happens is when stocks get in a channel like this. They want to go one way or another, okay? They want to either break up or they want to come back down a little bit. Now, I, I think the, the spot that I see right off the top of my head, which would be a really interesting spot, is if it broke down. Alibaba, it's not too far underneath this channel, but the 230 range would be interesting, okay? Now, it would break trend, and it could bring the stock down even further. That is possible. Obviously, if you have some uh, geopolitical risk here in the United States, you know, you know, these types of things could push this stock down even further. If, if for example, the whatever administration said, well, we're not going to allow Alibaba to do business here in the United States. Well, that would definitely impact their business, I think. Not to a, a 100% degree since they have large exposures to, to China as well, but it could provide some more selling pressure. I think you could get down here in the 190s. I certainly would be really excited to come down here. Even the 170, I mean, yeah, if we retest these lows, obviously we're all dreaming about uh, getting an opportunity to to buy stocks at the March lows that they made 170 I think would be your ultimate bottom point. That's why this 190 ish point looks really nice to me because your downside's 170, your upside's probably all the way back up into the 260s, 270s. That the risk reward on this would have me going big time on shares. Now I think more realistically, if this stock breaks down from this trend, you're probably into this 230 range. It might hit this support line here somewhere in this 230, 240 range and then have that act as some support, it might pop back up. Now, if this stock wants to come back to the top of the range, 267, if it breaks us 270, this stock's probably going to make new highs and kind of trend upward. What it takes for it to do that, I'm not 100% sure. It's probably a little bit political, a little bit operational as well. I don't know how you get much better than what they did here. Growing these numbers and then keeping expenses in complete and utter control, I don't know how it gets any better than that for Alibaba. Now, so 
Maybe you want to buy Alibaba. Maybe you want exposure to Alibaba. One way to do it without buying directly into Alibaba, again, there is some political risk. I don't think it matters what party is in power here in the United States. I see the tensions on both sides of the aisle, so I wouldn't necessarily think if if we have an administration change, these things are going to change. Maybe the rhetoric and the, I think for sure, the rhetoric and the tone would change if we have a change in administration, but I don't know if exactly the policy would change. Would we see something like this where the, the administration Administration forces a company like TikTok or like Alibaba to sell itself or to cease operations. I don't know. It's hard for me to guess that. But one way to hedge yourself is to get exposure to Alibaba through an ETF. Now, there's these ETFs that are more China based, and but these would be impacted if you have a lot of tension between the United States and, and China. Maybe China, you know. Uh, create some more tension, maybe United States, maybe they're both at fault. Well, these ETFs, I think, you know, there might be a lid put on some of these ETFs, whereas some of these other ones, like the Amplify Online Retail, the ProShares Online Retail, they're going to have exposure to Amazon and, and Walmart and, and other online retailers. And so some of these, while they're not going to give you like full exposure to Alibaba, they'll give you enough exposure to where you benefit some of the upside, but you won't get as much as the downside if a TikTok situation happens to Alibaba. Now, again, I'm not necessarily anticipating that. I'm just saying as investors, we need to start factoring in all these types of scenarios because I guess it's possible and it's definitely certainly something that you can have on your radar. So this is a stock that I, I've been wanting to buy. I've just never been able to pull the trigger on it. It's been on a nice uptrend. Maybe we see a pullback again where I would be looking for it is at the at the earliest at the bottom of this range into that 240. If you want to get a little more aggressive, I think you can come up here into the 245 range. That would be an interesting entry point. In my opinion, you'd be right in the, like the bottom of this range. I think the odds of it coming back up to the top of it would be rather high. If it happens to break down, I think you'll see some support here at the 230 level. You could maybe uh, start a small position here. If it breaks down, you could, you could get a little bit more. If for whatever reason, the, the whole thing falls apart. Well, then you're coming down here to 190 and you can kind of back up the truck if you want to do that at that point. So there's Alibaba for you. I think they're doing a great job. Their financials look absolutely phenomenal, in my opinion. Almost hard to believe, I guess. Uh, but everything looks pretty darn good for this company. For me, um, it's probably experiencing a little bit of profit taking at the moment. We'll see what happens going forward. I think you need to be aware of the political risk as well, dealing with companies that are based out of China as well. That's just the climate we're in right now. Not saying that's right or wrong. So there we go. That was Alibaba for you. Hopefully you guys are doing well out there. We'll be back again very soon with more videos. Maybe consider hitting that like and subscribe button. It helps us out here on the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Good luck with your investments.